Well, I think our mode to grow experiment is going quite well. It seems to be like it's really taken off out here. So can't complain about that. Now, I have a partial trailer load of hay here to unload still, which I tried to do four times yesterday. And every time I would get going, somebody would call and I would have to quit what I'm doing to do that instead. So kind of frustrating and this needs to get done. Like I got other stuff to do. I need the loader tractor for another job. So I am going to do this right now, whether anyone else likes it or not. So if you call right now, I'm not answering the phone because I am going to do this job and finally complete a task. So here we go. <laughs> Welcome back! If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man, and as I said, I'm going to unload some hay, and then after we do that, I'm going to start moving objects away from my building that I want to turn into my parts stash, warehouse, whatever you want to call it, because i got all that new siding to put on it, and I've got I just got to get going on that project. I got that parts bin on the trailer still I need to put in there. So we got to get going on it. Whether I like it or not or have time, it's got to happen. So I'm unloading all but two bales because I have to pay dad back. He's going to take those other two uh, when brother-in-law takes his trailer back over there because that's where he leaves it parked. So they get those two bales and I'll unload these other one, two, three, four, five off of here. And then, uh, yeah, we should be in business. That should be enough hay. Uh, I think I had 15 on there total. So that should be enough to get me going here till spring. It really kicks off full force. They've been munching on the grass, but of course, as it got cold again, that kind of stunts the growth of the grass. So, you know, I like to keep them in hay pretty well all year round if I can. Just in case they get bored, they got something to munch on, see? And they don't go wandering off into the distance. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm taking a leak, but I am not pointing the camera at it. As I was warned by my brother-in-law to make sure I never accidentally filmed it on camera. <laughs> I like how the birds crap on it, even when it's out in the open. There's no trees here. Ridiculous. It's also cold, so it's probably not going to like sitting out here. I should have parked it in the shed last night. Or at least where I could get a cord to it. Come on, baby. Let's let it rest a second. Come on, you don't want me to have to get the fard pounders out. I will. Now the wind is starting to blow cold and miserably because why not I will let it warm up a minute it'll kick in here and start running smooth well I think we can work with that It'll warm up as we use it. Now the other trick is not to forget that I put that spear on the back so that I don't end up ramming into something. Because for some reason I park equipment all over the place. Ridiculous. And these bales are very difficult to get loose off of your spear for whatever reason. There we go. My poor loader. I think it's bent.
So yesterday I sold that loader that was on that 1355 and I was using this pin to pick up the pieces which is also why I took my chain loose which is also why we have this problem now. So we got to fix that. I forgot.
holes and things. I managed to get one move the other day before we had to stop. So now I'm gonna have to set you down. I can't do everything one-handed here. you move them but this is how I move them I need something solid enough to lean them against though I don't really want to lean them all against that bin oh okay well 38 34s and I think there is a set of clamp-ons behind there that are really only good because they're Oliver rims. And this is good that we're cleaning up here because this stuff needs to get out of the dirt. That is a 59 loader. It's kind of unusual, you don't see too many. And I have all the pieces. It came with, uh, no it did not. It did not come with my Super 55. It came with the 70 on steel and the guy had a super 55 diesel and he said he wanted to get rid of this so i bought it does that say e649 i was thinking it was a model 59 loader and like the one that's on my 550 is a 59a but i wanted to fix it up sometime and maybe put it on my super 55 i don't know but we keep accumulating stuff, see? And then throwing it on top of other stuff. So now's a good excuse to clean this up. So that's what's gonna happen. This is a momentous project. It is like, it's hard to get yourself started on it because it's just so much, you know? Even the cleaning up is a lot, but has to be done. So clamp on duels on Oliver rims. Basically I saved them for the rims. And they've been around here for years, see? See how many years they've been around here? I saved them and they're rotting off the tires, literally. Oh, geez. What to do with these? Put them somewhere. All right, well, we got that cleaned up, so that's good. Never move that loader. Or these grills that now are lying here because I got them the other day. So, gonna pick up this tin. Gotta clean out the building first before we can do anything. It's just one of those deals that's like, where do you get started, you know? I got enough stuff to do it, but I don't have enough knowledge, see? I've never used this cannonball track before. If you don't know what I mean, we can go look at it. More parts playing everywhere, tripping over them even. That's not gonna work for that to stop the dirt. Cannonball track, round. Works really slick, you know? It doesn't get bound up like your traditional square barn track. Super expensive. Also super difficult to figure out what you gotta have because apparently even the company does not keep everything on hand, or at least, I don't know. I had a lot of issues. I bought this piece of track. Let me explain this. A guy pulled into the store where I was at getting siding, and I was going to order some of this track anyway, and he had a stick of this track, and he was trying to return it. It's 14 feet long. And he wanted to return it. The store said, we don't return stuff like that. And I said, hey there, buddy. 
I said, I'm not Canadian, but hey, buddy. No. I said, I need that. I'll just buy it from you. So they looked up what he paid for it, and I just wrote him a check. Fine and dandy. Didn't come with any brackets. Turns out there's a whole host of bracketry you can use. So what I wanted was, I wanted the brackets where you nail a 2x6 up, and then your brackets, you know, mount to that, and then your piece of trim goes flush against the building, comes out, covers the 2x6, and then goes over this track. And there was a bunch of different options to get that to happen to, and I did in fact get the trim, but guess what? Another wrinkle in the plan. And the wrinkle in the plan, if I can get this piece of trim out, don't mind that heart bar, you haven't seen that. <laughs> the trim is gray, and I wanted the trim to be white to match the trim that I got for the corners. So I guess I'll just paint it or something, I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's not that big a deal. This wasn't that expensive, really. I expected that to be super expensive, but I think it was $24. And it's 10 foot 5 inches long, which is odd, but that's what it is. But you see how it's got this step where it will mount over the 2x6. So that's our plan. I got the red metal in that pile. I got all the trim. Now it's just a matter of making this happen. So securing down our loose rotten boards for underneath, cause they can stay put, I'm not pulling them off. They can stay under there. And then put our two by six where we want our door. We're gonna cut a new opening door. It's gonna be wider, be a sliding door. And then we'll put our corner trim pieces up and then we will start cutting our red metal because the way this will work then is the door track needs to be up first on that two by six with that piece of trim and then your red metal will come down to that trim on top so that the water hits it and kicks out and then underneath we will cut the straight pieces to fill in the between here and there and yonder you know what i mean so that is where we are and yeah it was time to do something because this siding is just rickety and although it's native lumber and the native lumber even when it looks like this is still pretty strong so you know anyway but it doesn't matter it's getting covered up and it'll never be a corn crib again which is fine it's going to be a parts store so that is great well as always if you enjoy the videos give them a thumbs up leave a comment tell me you like it Tell me I'm an idiot. I know nothing about building, which is true. Uh, you know, tell me you hate me. Tell me you wish that you hadn't thrown that uh, ax at your TV when I came on. But hey, do what you got to do, you know. So anyway, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.